Welcome back to another episode of our first year experience uh, webinar series. I'm joined by Miss Juliana today, uh, and I'm going to just let Miss Juliana jump right into it and take us away here. All right. Hey guys, my name is Juliana Testa. I am a sophomore at UNCW. I am from Aston, Pennsylvania. So if you know where that is, it's a little bit outside of Philadelphia. Um, I'm a biology major with two minors in neuroscience and medical humanities. I'm involved with a lot of stuff here on campus. So I'm a member of our honors program. I'm a student ambassador. So I'm one of the groups that give tours on campus. Um, and I also have an on-campus job with campus recreation. So I'm kind of involved all around campus. Pretty much anything you can think of, I kind of dip my toes into. Awesome. Um, Julian, I know we've talked a little bit about kind of the experience coming down, especially from, you know, a good distance from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So can you walk us through maybe a little bit of that process moving down, you know, a couple of years ago and, and how you felt that entire transition felt and what maybe some recommendations you'd have? Yeah, I mean, so when I was looking at colleges, um, I always knew that I kind of wanted to go somewhat far away from home. So I kind of had mentally prepared myself um, by senior year that I probably wasn't going to be around my family um, for the really the next four years after that. Um, and I was a little bit worried because I actually was the only person from my high school that came to UNCW or came really anywhere in North Carolina. Um, so I knew that this was going to be really a new transition because I really didn't know anybody at all. Um, and it honestly, like, it was the easiest transition ever. Um, one of, you know, I feel like a lot of people get worried, like, how am I going to make friends? How am I going to find people, um, you know, that have common interests with me, especially if you don't know a single person at your university when you go in. But I promise you, you will find that. Um, my RA actually was really awesome. And for our first week of school, she actually made us, when we were home, keep our doors open. So a couple of the ways that I met my friends were they were actually just walking around the halls and meeting new people and just popping their heads in, saying hi, um, you know, telling them a little bit about yourself or out of state, especially to get involved um, right when you come on campus. Um, UNCW does this really awesome thing. Um, we actually have an involvement carnival within the first two weeks of our um, fall semester. And then we have a mini one again in the spring. And this is actually a really awesome way to get involved. All you have to do is put down your email um, and you get added into these awesome organizations on campus. And you can actually meet some of your friends through that. So um, like I said, I am a student ambassador. So that's actually how I met a lot of my best friends here at UNCW, um, which is really awesome. And that was honestly not until my second semester of freshman year. Um, but I really did have a core group of people that I was friends with and was able to hang out with my first semester as well. Um, you really do meet a lot of people in your residence halls as well as through those different organizations. So you never really have to worry about that. And obviously, um, there is a concern, you know, what if I get homesick? What do I do if I can't get home? Or even what if there's a fall break and I don't have my car? How do I get home? So many people on campus will offer to drive you. So I actually found um, one of my best friends at UNCW is from Maine. So we actually have been carpooling back and forth um, for our Thanksgiving breaks, for fall breaks. So you really do make connections with people that are able to help you out with that as well, because that is definitely a concern um, for our out-of-state students as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, kind of on a similar page there, I know a lot of out-of-state students when they, you know, come down to UNC Wilmington for the first time and they're visiting, they say, well, if I come down from Pennsylvania or I come down from New Jersey or, you know, Maine, even farther away, you know, am I going to have things to do on the weekend? Does everyone go home on the weekend? And kind of what is the campus community like? Can you talk a little bit about that and your experiences, you know, your first couple of years here? Yeah, UNCW definitely makes sure um, you, their students are involved on campus um, during the week and on weekends. Um, we hold a lot of events. So actually one of the photos up here right now is Midnight Madness. Um, so this is actually something that happens um, on our second semester. Um, it usually happens on a Friday or Saturday night and it's just a pep rally to get ready for our basketball season. Um, so they really hold events um, along with our athletics um, and then just different events, um, things like UNC weekends that hold ice skating events. Um, we have Lumina Theater right on campus. They hold movies Fridays and Saturday nights for free now, which is really awesome for students. Um, and really, students don't go home that often. I think a lot of people kind of think that, oh, I'll go home every weekend. But then when you come to campus and you see how much stuff there is to do, um, you really don't need to go home. And especially being so close, we have the beach and then we also have downtown Wilmington. There's so many awesome restaurants and so many things for you to do that there really isn't a reason to go home. So a lot of our students don't really do that. And I mean, I especially, um, this year I was on an on-campus apartment and I actually didn't go home until Thanksgiving break. So I actually stayed over my fall break, was able to go spend time at the beach and hang out with some of my friends as well. And a lot of times if you do have an on-campus job or even an off-campus job, you are working through those weekends. So again, you'll probably still be on campus as well. Awesome, 
Awesome. Can you touch a little bit on kind of your academics and maybe specifically first, uh, a little bit about transitioning from like your high school classes to your college classes and what were the main differences? You know, a lot of people are in school a lot during high school and then in college, your hours change. So can you talk a little bit about the expectations that come with a college schedule, academic schedule, as opposed to a high school one? Yeah, so I was very fortunate in high school. I actually went to a college preparatory high school. Um, so they really worked um, our junior and senior year to make sure we were ready for college. So my first semester freshman year, I honestly probably should have loaded a little bit more on my schedule because I was really just having that same course load that I had in high school. Right. And then second semester, everything kind of completely took off. Um, I, I, I am a bio major, I'm also pre-med, so I am taking a lot of lab courses. Um, so I am usually in class pretty much all day, um, at least three or four days a week. Um, so definitely second semester and on has been a lot more heavy in course load, but our professors are really awesome and really make sure that they're not loading on too much work all at once. Um, a lot of the things that like our science departments will do as well, um, they hold SI, which is our supplemental instruction. So they do a lot to really help our students outside of the classroom as well, which helps us for studying and stuff like that. So you don't necessarily just have to go study alone. They have other people to help you as well. Um, and obviously, as a pre-med student, um, I do have a lot of work, but it isn't too hard to handle, I promise. Um, I really have found ways that I can, you know, go and study with my friends or do kind of things in bigger group settings that make it a little less daunting. Um, and especially with our lab classes, what I found is that those kind of supplement almost as like a study session, especially for the biology courses, because a lot of times, exactly what you're doing in your lab coincides with what you're doing in class. So while it might look like a lot of work, it supplements the work you're doing um, in your regular lecture class as well. Um, but a lot of studying does go into it and a lot of hard work does, but I promise it is possible. Um, it's not too much. You know, you do have to find kind of a work um, social life uh, balance because it can be a little bit hard, especially if you are involved in a lot on campus, but it isn't impossible, like I said. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to show some more photos here, but I actually want you to continue. Talk. Can you talk a little bit more about, you know, your science classes specifically? You know, a lot of students come down to UNCW for a wide variety of sciences. Of course, we have pre-med, but, you know, also our marine biology and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about specifically how those lab sections are structured and kind of the differences that you have in a lab section and the experiences you have there as opposed to maybe just a lecture class or something like that? Yeah, so like I said, a lot of times, especially with the biology department, they really try and coincide what you're doing with exactly what you're doing in class at the time. Um, so right now I'm in an anatomy and an anatomy lab. Um, so every time we start a new um, body system in class, we're working on that system that week in lab. Um, so we have different online software that we use as well as different models to kind of supplement while we are learning a little bit of the physical anatomy, but it's more the physiology in lecture, we're learning really that core anatomy in our lab so that we do kind of supplement um, our lecture as well, because it would be a lot if we were in there learning all of that, you know, two days a week or three days a week. So having that extra day that we go in for a couple hours and are able to get hands-on learning, it's a lot easier than just staring at a picture and having to label stuff. Right. And then I'm obviously taking a lot of chemistry courses as well. And those are really awesome um, because those are really good ways to kind of just get hands-on with stuff especially if you are interested in going into research, because a lot of our professors do do research on campus. Um, so if you kind of get down those fundamental experiments and learn how to do these fundamental techniques, um, you really can get in with a professor because you already know that stuff, as well as it just helps you if you're gonna go on and take those harder courses because maybe they don't have a lab class, but maybe they're telling you about a lab or a technique that you might need to know about. And if you didn't take the lab, you don't know what the technique is. Um, so it really is just nice to have that there to supplement um, for our students in those lecture classes. And obviously being pre-med, that is something that I will probably have until I graduate. Um, so being able to keep that hands-on learning until graduation is really awesome as well. Fantastic. Speaking of kind of your, you know, your lab and your pre-med support, can you talk about the advising resources that you have on campus? Specifically, you know, within our pre-professional programs, we have a lot of students, not only in pre-med, but maybe pre-law, pre-health, pre-vet that are going into those kind of similar path programs. Can you talk a little bit about your experiences with those, those specific resources? Yeah, so when I came to UNCW, um, your advisor is going to be through the university college. So I was lucky, um, through the honors college, they do give you a specific advisor um, that worked with me. So my advisor was actually my um, uni class, 
professor and he actually was the pre-med advisor at the time. So he kind of helped me um, my first and second semester kind of get settled into my pre-med track, kind of pick everything out and look at what I would kind of need to do here at UNCW um, to potentially go to medical school. Um, and now since I do have my biology major advisor, um, my, ma my advisor now is helping me out with that as well. And I am part of the pre-professional programs. Um, so I am getting emails constantly about different things that are going on. Um, a couple weeks ago before um, we did have to leave school, um, we actually were gonna be doing um, kind of a suturing workshop so it was really awesome. They hold a ton of different events for our students that you wouldn't necessarily get to experience in like a regular lecture class or even a lab um, because they aren't necessarily going to be tailored to like a medical student. So they're definitely, you know, bringing in experiences that are going to be more for those students um, or if it's, you know, pre-law, um, pre-professional program, pre-health, anything like that. They're going to bring in different uh, lectures, workshops, um, things that are going to really help you get to that you know, end goal of going to medical school, going to law school, um, as well as, you know, just sending you emails with, hey, here's an internship that you guys might be interested in. Here's the application. Here's the requirements. So really just giving you the information that you would need to succeed um, and get into a potential graduate or med school. Awesome. Awesome. I know we could ha talk for, you know, hours about the Honors College, but can you give just a couple minutes about, you know, your experiences personally with Honors and, and your kind of recommendations that you'd have uh, for any student maybe thinking about applying to the Honors College? Yeah, so I'm really happy that I ended up applying. Um, when I applied to UNCW, I kind of just applied on a whim. Um, and I applied early action, didn't really, you know, hadn't visited the school or anything. And I actually got my decision early so that I could apply to the Honors College because I didn't even know it was really a thing. I was so happy that I did that. Um, as a freshman, you do live with your fellow Honors students. Um, so right now, they're in Cornerstone Hall altogether. I was in a smaller building um, that used to be named Honors House. Um, and so that's a really nice thing. You get to live with those students as well um, because you will have your um, University 101 class with them. Um, so you do kind of get a tight-knit community as, in there as well, which is really nice to have, especially being out of state. Um, it also has been really nice just to take smaller classes. Um, so obviously you do have to take some gen ed classes. So one of my classes that I had to take was um, the, like an introductory to statistics class. Um, and I was actually able to take an honor section of that. So it was about 20 people instead of 40 or 50. And that was really nice for me because statistics has never been my thing. So being able to have that really small class size that was a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with a professor in an introductory class was nice because obviously if a lot of people need to take that, it's gonna be a little bit of a bigger course size. So being able to have that one-on-one -on -one was really nice, um, as well as being able to register early for your courses is nice as well, especially because as you get further into your major, it is, you know, very, uh, those class sizes do get smaller. And especially for somebody like me that is pre-med that does have, you know, kind of very fine-tuned classes that I have to take um, before I, I apply to medical school, it's been really nice to be able to get into those classes um, and take them earlier rather than later. Um, but really just being able to meet some of the people in there as well. Um, I'm really excited as a, usually the end of your junior year um, or your beginning of your senior year, you actually will do a thesis project. So I've kind of already had that in the back of my mind about what I can do on that, which is really nice that I'll be able to do some really cool research um, even before graduation. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, my last question for you is that we likely have a lot of uh, seniors right here that are watching and uh, amidst all the craziness going on, trying to make up their final decision on where to go for college. So can you, you know, rewind a couple of years ago when you were in their shoes and, and walk us through your decision process? Can you give them any advice pot potentially on what helped you make that final decision and what you'd recommend them to do in these next couple of months? Yeah, so my decision process was kind of crazy. I didn't really apply to a lot of schools. Um, I thought, you know, I knew where I wanted to go. And then I kind of came to decision time. And I really didn't know. Um, I hadn't really toured all of the schools. I'd only toured a couple of them. And I actually came to UNCW on Seahawk preview day. Um, and that, I walked in um, and we went into Trask Coliseum, listened to the chancellor, and we went out onto campus. And I just looked at my dad who was with me and I was like, this is the school I need to go to. Um, one of the things I always tell parents at the end of tours um, and to their kids is to make sure that wherever you want to go to school, that it feels like home because you'll never want to leave if it does. That's really what you need to feel to be on that campus. You don't want to kind of, you know, be like, I think I like it or my friends are coming here, so I, I'll be fine. Because if you don't love it, then you're not going to like the college in the end. And coming to UNCW has really been the best decision I could have made. Um, I didn't really know I was going to make that decision until 
a month before the deadline that I had to decide on a school. Um, so I really, when I walked on campus and I was like, this is it. I, you know, I was so excited because I didn't really think, you know, anything of it when I applied, just kind of applied on a whim, like I said. So being able to, you know, walk right onto campus, I was able to talk to somebody in my major. I was able to talk to students um, as well as see a residence hall and be able to see all that stuff you know, really solidified that for me. But obviously, if you aren't able to tour, we have so many great opportunities, you know, online to look through some of the buildings on campus. Um, you can also talk, you know, if you call, I'm not sure if they're there right now, but if you call, you could talk to some of the people in each of the departments. And they have some really awesome information on there as well um, in different um, departments. So you can really find out a lot about the school online as well. Um, but again, if you do get the option to tour um, and you walk on that campus and you really love it, you know, that's the, the best thing that you can feel when you walk on campus. Awesome. Well, Juliana took care of my job for me. She wrapped it up so well. Um, if you have any questions uh, for our office, uh, maybe specifically regarding some of the experiences that Juliana's had, please reach out to us. Um, we have our phone number here and our email address. Uh, we'll be posting some additional content as well, um, both similar experiences like Juliana's here from other students, as well as some of our virtual tour and other uh, campus resources as well. So stay posted on our website for the latest information, uh, and we'll see you next time.